Uh, so uh, we can have more time for questions. I will call the audience to come here and answer. So if it's possible. It's best. Thank you. 
principal convencional, se se utilizar específicos for design objects, not Delta who made it, just feed a lot of it was instruments that objects into the machine and it's uh, analyze it uh, with the made a, a ECA analysis and then the, the, some shapes come out but the shapes are also completely abstract because it's just a, a, a kind of a abstract or possible tool that the is very direct that is the most most interesting the the analytical and the, the analytical phase or in the, the trying to establish them some some potential so determine some potential of the space that or the transformations that are made through the examples through analysis through So, uh, first, you, you might have really two other questions. One of them is the difference between the, the traditional and industrial way compared to the digital way. When I spoke with traditional, uh, traditional is the, the panels that are made by hand by artists, and it's very, very slow. It takes like one month or two months to finish one panel. Uh, the digital way I believe is limited because it creates just one piece. You can create and create a big quantity, but it's it is always the same piece. And uh, the digital way brings a new different way where you can create all different pieces and bigger than the uh, bigger than the traditional, not so big as the industrial, but not so much different. Uh, and on that way the personification and the, the more complexity what design that you can do is an offer that the digital uh, works and the digital software this and design give us to the to target for this kind of publication. So when you ask me if I can do a draw into a leaf, I can do it because it's just a, a 3D draw. So I can adjust and I can adapt and you, if you are good in designing 3D it doesn't take too much time. And easier, uh, today easier, it's much easier nowadays to make a real design. Because the computers offer it, that kind of technology. I was asking that because I think that sometimes uh, to reproduce this uh, whole time, uh, it's an expensive process, probably. It's expensive to pay someone to work for two or three or four months to do that. Probably with the digital process, you can reproduce. Uh, in the half process from the, the future. Uh, I, I contact a lot of industries on the, the work I've done. And uh, for example, just to make a prototype in this way, uh, it costs almost 500 or 600 euros just to do the prototype, not to create a piece of final, just to do a prototype. And to read this work, in one afternoon I do the prototype. So they can compare, they can adapt, they can see the, the capacity of the prototype or the piece that we want to produce and it's not so much expensive. Um, <laughs> the, the two projects are not built and our our first when we start this that was our uh, first critic to project because how can they make two equal things to such a different areas in the world, like to Brazil and to Luanda. And we realized that in Luanda they didn't invest much time in that. And in Brazil we can see that they start to predict that um, some variants in the facades in order to shape more the project and stuff. But Really, we didn't have like the sources to make a climate analysis because in London we didn't have a, a drain or a plot, so we couldn't. <laughs> but we based what we 
we what we have. <laughs> and in, we concluded that the office itself, it wasn't really concerned about it. And it's a great <laughs> Uh, well, congratulations on the three uh, presentations. I think we start with really well in the second day of this symposium. But I'd like to ask the Schwab something. Well, I it was really interesting to your conference, but at the same time, I remember the conference of Madalena Kim da Silva that was here last year. And she made the, the warrior study uh, related with the Sparky Squares. And um, the, the, the way they presented the, the, the work related with the definition of what she considered three types of squares uh, in Portugal. And she made the definitions of these, these, kind, these different types of squares. And, but she made a study related with the orange <coughs> of the space. And uh, the doubt, the green, the orange, the, the beginning of the space, not today, but the orange of the space. When you make this study, you are making this study related of with nowadays. When you make this study related with density, for example, uh, population density is related with today, data, yes, yes. and uh, and you mix with the uh, uh, temporal slice. I mean, yeah. we give it the synchronic yeah. analysis, not the deep or it's mm -hmm. not the. Mm -hmm. I, I'm analyzing what is today. 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 Okay, so it's today. So the squares, the body squares, related with the, the, the research made by Peter Mesh and John Mesh, and you are studying the squares today. Exactly. They are. Yeah. They were okay. okay. So you we perceive the transformation also of the use the, the, of the space. The transformation can be. Uh, It's really because you know it, <laughs> but they can be inferred from the reality of the uh -huh. And uh, it would be like a, like a more speculative or archaeological. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't know it, it's, uh, it's as it is. And, uh, and every notion of the The mm -hmm. process of the, of the liberation is these spaces are constantly evolving. And the formal ones, not so, not so mad, so not so formally or physically, they didn't change that much nowadays. Mm -hmm. But uh, they are they used to be, but now I'm study, just studying as they are today. And uh, what I'm trying to do. You saw a lot of the geometrical or physical approaches. And uh, when I made um, the clustering, everything for the distance I is the same. The big ones are always in the same cluster. Mm -hmm. What can make the difference is when I populate the clustering information that comes from, from density or the 3D dimension or something like this that would help to. So maybe uh, it's a kind of naive approach. No, because it's interesting because Madeleine also made the study of the of the void, the empty space, and also of the buildings and the facades. Yeah, yeah, the connectivity, the the floor plan mm -hmm. the No, 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 but 
anyway, the square in the was different, how far these squares are. Ah, before, no, I, I think it was before the project and after the project in Trafalgar Square. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but they, uh, no, normally this kind of uh, represents the proportion as it went from slices in time, like we now say zero slices in time, uh, to see the evolution. Mm -hmm. But here I try to relate to it uh, more in the, in the present potential of the space. So mm -hmm. If I know that the space is very good, there's no doubt, everybody knows, I don't. I don't or a lot or some of them I want to see like a classic item. Uh, linking or comparing 
this information with the information it produces with traditional survey through people interview. It's possible, or is it, I don't know, because yes, uh, it's important, it's important to understand what they, they see and they feel, uh, people. So, yeah, normally it's not for uh, no. helping people and something like this, it correlates with the uh, interviews, new feelings, I don't know how it's taken this. <laughs> but, uh, the perspective. You know? Tend to be evidence-based, so uh, they're rigorous, and uh, so they have theory and, uh, and they make an analysis, and then things are checked, they go to the place, they talk to the, to the people, make some dates, and, some, and then some, and we now we do it. Some, something on uh, what uh, João said, and, and, uh, and focus on a, uh, a little detail about his presentation, which is the last topic that he's aiming at, basically the last goal of the, of the research, which is to compare, after he, he, he developed a classification with all those uh, 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 properties, all those attributes, uh, He's planning to compare that with patterns of use. Okay, and those patterns of use will bring some um, enlightenment in terms of the qualities of the space or how formal uh, issues uh, correlate with uh, uh, with certain patterns of use. And uh, I think that's a very interesting step in his uh, in his work, and that's where some discovery will come out. Uh, I, I would say that there are two points where some discovery can, can, can emerge. One is uh, how uh, the classification emerges from the data, because it might be some kind of classification of, uh, of squares that we simply can't imagine uh, with, uh, uh, let's say, the typical uh, morphological analysis that we do. And the other thing is to correlate those patterns of, uh, of information with, uh, uh, with the use. And, and that is, I would say, particularly interesting. And so I really hope you really can get to that point as soon as possible. I, I would like to see that. <laughs> I have a, another question about the tiles. Um, yeah, I mean, so the, the, the comparison to the traditional method is, is going to be pretty extreme in terms of time and cost, right? So now the, what you offer is the, the possibility for a customization of each individual tile. And I think there are a lot of people who are doing some of the things in the world. About. Right. Um, but still, does that, you know, does that outweigh the time and cost of a traditional method? Because I don't think we're there yet with the speed of the CNC to compete with the stamping, you know, the thousands per hour. So I'm wondering if, if, you know, if there's a hybrid approach where it might not be that, it would, it would seem like a clever thing to do would be to find a way to um, make something customizable, but not to the point where every tile is different. It may be that there are 10 sets of tiles, so that the aggregation of that system creates a false sense of heterogeneity, instead of, you know, when you see the facade, it feels like it's a totally customizable thing, but you can stamp out 10 different sets in, you know, a quarter of the time it would take to actually see and see the top. I just thought, like the thoughts that maybe you have thought about kind of combining the two. Yeah, of course that would be an example, but you can, uh, uh, you can from show that everything is different, but it's a repeat design. Uh, but what I want to show is that with the fabrication, uh, digital fabrication, we can all be different. And if you ask me, as an architect, if you ask me a project, I will do a project for you with your panel. 
But if someone asks me another panel, I, will, I can do a different one. Mm -hmm. And the cost and the facility of working like that, the digital fabrication, give you that possibility. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you can have uh, a lot of different ways of doing the tiles. Yeah. But in the customization and the, the, the fabrication, the digital give you this opportunity to develop. I think it's richer mm -hmm. than the traditional like the industrial way. Yeah, sure. sure. So I think yeah. on the beginning yeah. I can see another another use for it. For instance, if you only want ten tiles because you cannot go to the industry because they don't make ten tiles. There is no scale, so it's personalized and it's for small demands. No, for real no, no, you mean for real detention, for instance. If you only need 20 tiles, you cannot find it. But nobody would make it. Because no, I'm, suggest so, it's so no, I'm suggesting that there's 10 unique tiles that you make. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, right. Reducing the cost of prototypes, probably. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, another thing is that usually when you go to, uh, as an architect or a client, when you are choosing your tiles for your bathroom, mm -hmm. you have a catalog. Sure. I don't have a catalog. Mm -hmm. I have a job that you give me and I make it. Mm -hmm. You see, that is the power of the digital publication. Mm -hmm. that you can do whatever you want as you want. Right, but you're also going to pay a lot of money for that. No. Absolutely. No. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, 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 I did the cost. No. It does cost almost the same thing. Or it can be cheaper. It depends on the, on the way the you, have, you want your design. <coughs> I make six pieces, 10 by 10, in half an hour. I can make a square meter in one day. And the next day I have on the fabric directly because I don't have to wait for the dryers and wait for nothing. Mm -hmm. It could be already on the fabric uh, to have the painting, the glazing and everything. So in one week, I can have all the, the Depends on the, 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 the dimension, but I can have uh, very bigger, uh, uh, different tiles and panel combination, uh, very quicker. And the costs are practically the same. Because I don't spend money in prototypes, I don't spend money in the, in the swaps. So it will be, right? the, when you pick up that price, it's almost a Two more questions, and I need to close. Uh, my question is basically: Did you make any calculations about the price that would cost one square meter, let's say, if I would I, like I, to? I mean, I'm in the work. I'm in the final work. Uh, I, I'm sorry to not bring it, but uh, a simple cost, and it depends. One thing is very easy: it depends if you have a machine or not. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> First thing, of course. And, and that's also the price of the machine. So of course, the machine is expensive. No, yeah. no, no doubt. And uh, it's used for, for example, on the school, uh, it, was, uh, it was free, so and it costs not. <laughs> but, uh, but usually they, 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 they ask for like 30 euros an hour. Uh, I don't need 30 euros. I just need 50 euros to pay my of, of metric six pieces. But the square meter could cost 150 each square meter. Uh, without for, considering for the cost of the machine. Yeah. Without considering the cost of the machine. Of course. The cost of the machine it depends. If you are going to buy it by second hand or you buy it the first hand. Okay. The, the time. Is no, right. by time. Yeah, of course. But that 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 was the Let's say the meaning of my question is comparing with the price that you get for one square meter of the tiles that you have in the catalog, how, how much more expensive uh, are, are these going to be? Because they will be a little bit more expensive, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, very because of the same time. Yeah, it's very difficult to yeah, but, but it does not offer the same. It's, it's a very difficult discussion. <laughs> if you ask me for a real, if, if you go to a catalog, you don't have your own drop, your real style, first thing. So you have to pay for an artist, and believe me, it's very expensive. As I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
industrial revolution failed. You know, totally across like in the certain method of the industrial revolution. You know, and I see it in this uh, global uh, panorama that we, we must see the problem of uh, the use of those uh, uh, automatic methods uh, to act in the society. <laughs> And we, we, we could see here the two opposite sides. Some guys want to produce a uh, unique and most valuable product, and the other wants to make it uh, cheaper. Uh, and they use the same, uh, well, not the same, but uh, the general global technologies of uh, fabrication, of uh, industrial fabrication, of uh, products and the uh, 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 formal methods that we are discussing. Yeah. Of course, uh, you see there, there is some black in the stock, the stack over there. We need uh, to produce that. We don't have people to, to, to do that because the labor, uh, well, it was a skill that was lost. Uh, nobody can do that now. And uh, this is a method that can be replicated. Each of these tiles, I don't know what's the cost, maybe our school cannot afford that. <laughs> but uh, it's a social need. And uh, I must uh, say that uh, uh, discussing employment of architects in Portugal, uh, this is another, uh, another possibility. You can see you uh, students out there. Uh, it's another, uh, I don't I would say the, the mean, the, way of uh, working, but it's another interesting uh, uh, employment uh, uh, possibility uh, to work in those kinds. For, for example, for the ceramic industry, Portuguese industry is uh, uh, a very uh, important one in Portugal. Well, the other it was uh, about uh, João uh, work. Well, another overwhelming <laughs> work. Uh, uh, the amount of I'm completely amazed at uh, not the uh, amount of work <laughs> that is made. Uh, I don't know if you see it. Yes, I did. And it's there, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, yesterday I saw other, other overwhelming uh, Works, research, and uh, I was amazed again. Um, and I think uh, that is a lesson I have not that also. Uh, you are very modest. You know where are your limits and what you have to do. When I was, yourself was talking yesterday, I, when the end of the presentation, I think he had and that is a lot more. I was taking the to ask him what is the most part? What is it? Well, how I will use it the question you made. And uh, well the, the last slide he presented, I was writing that and he said, Yes, I don't know yet. This is what I am going to address my research now. Is there it's, it's what uh, this is going to but that uh, previous work is absolutely necessary. Well, I have uh, a strong interest in the epistemology. How uh, the knowledge uh, is uh, crea created by uh, humankind. <laughs> and uh, yes, in, uh, we see historically that this kind of work is uh, going to the to the, well, the, the data that comes from uh, from reality to collect that data, to analyze that data, to see if there are some patterns we, we can use uh, then. Uh, it's absolutely necessary. The, the creation of uh, that empiric, uh, empiric uh, patterns, and then you call it a name, uh, uh, some the concept, people that uh, well, it's absolutely necessary and uh, it's creating uh, something that in my 
meg, hogy fél évig a Connotation of Semantic. Well, that Connotation of Semantic after F2 has a counterpart in the in other language or in reality. For example, this uh, yeah, yeah, it's connotational language of uh, analyzing all the squares must have a counterpart in other language, the sociological language, the psychological language, the material language, etc. and so on and so on. And this uh, connection between uh, Connotation and denotation is the next step you have to. Uh, I think you you know that you said that Miguel said that it's that it's missing and it's very difficult. The first place to arrive to the, the meaningful semantic uh, of the line, the connotation of semantic, and then relate to the to the other. It's uh, very difficult. Like, uh, for example. Uh, to arrive to the connotational semantic of the uh, concept of uh, instant velocity, something uh, that kid uh, some grade knows what is instant velocity. Yeah, well, you really didn't know what it was till he could reach that concept. It was uh, uh, amazing. Uh, absolutely, uh, work, uh, millennium, millenniums of work to arrive to such a, a, a single thing, a simple, a simple thing. Um, well, some concepts, yeah, for example, the concept, I know a lot of structures, <laughs> the concept of uh, force, something we use. Well, nowadays we say force is something in the notation of semantics on the structural engineering, but it's not a good concept. In the, the transition to the confrontation of reality, now we prefer to, call, to talk about energy. Energy is a good concept, but this is uh, some uh, uh, evolutions of centuries of... <coughs> It's to say, this is all to say to you that uh, don't uh, despise the, the, the effort. It's absolutely necessary what you are doing. Uh, next step uh, will be uh, very much uh, uh, lighter for, uh, for you and the other guys that are uh, uh, working on it. For example, I talked to Flora and to Mantolini. Uh, and uh, when they are urban, they use, uh, they use uh, methodologies uh, very well, past methodologies. Uh, when uh, we are discussing, for example, space syntax, they absolutely saw immediately, they use the possibility to use that, uh, that new methodologies in their, well, in this case, their notation of semantics because they saw the utility of that. Well, that is the uh, first thing. Don't despise. Try always and uh, uh, second is uh, uh, there is a denotation of semantics outside that is already made. I, uh, I said yesterday that, uh, for example, in visibility analysis, we are not inventing uh, since visibility is something that is in the architectural theory for centuries. The visibility analysis doing nothing also, uh, nothing but the formalization of Albertis Concidita. We go to Alberti and we see there uh, what we are, we are doing. He is not, not, not using a formal method. Well, maybe he was, <laughs> those uh, no, Alberti used uh, many things. Uh, that we can uh, use today in formats, but uh, not the same way the, we are doing. But, uh, well, all the theorists, uh, theoretical work in, in architecture is the semantics we can use, uh, not to play, to play that for, uh, formally, form, uh, formal methods, but we can uh, use that, all that work that was. And third, uh, 
uh, on the, uh, you know, I think you have a perfect conscience of the fact that it's a uh, well-known uh, something required in the epistemology or in the life, the, the, the development of knowledge through the centuries that uh, an empirical, uh, uh, pure empirical analysis of that uh, does not arrive, uh, does not produce a theory. Uh, no theory has been made by uh, pure transformation, uh, statistical transformation of all mm -hmm. that. The theory has a, a degree of abstraction that uh, no pure uh, empirical analysis could make. There is sometimes some. Uh, well, we do not uh, arrive to gravity theory or to quantum theory or something with uh, pure uh, uh, statistical analysis. Theory is not uh, 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 an empirical transformation of that. It's if we're talking about social science, probably it will be an empirical. Uh, I think it's absolutely true for all sciences, for all knowledge. Our theories are not uh, uh, a pure uh, mathematical uh, uh, transformation of empirical data. The possible empirical data has to be answered by the theory, but it's a past more, much more abstract. Uh, and uh, yes, this is only a number not to stop and. Uh, empirical uh, analysis and to go to theory to create uh, the, the laws that regulate the world uh, in, a, in a more abstract and generic and profound uh, sense and so on. I, I'd suggest that you do not afraid that I'll go a little bit later when we I think to uh, ideas to think how to operationalize uh, all this that you are talking about and also what Frank uh, said about the role uh, of construction industry in the digital revolution. We have 15 minutes to discuss it. <laughs> <laughs>